thank you very much uh, for inviting me to have this um, short presentation on the on the surveillance and control um, of Anufil Stephensa in Iran. It is my pleasure to be presenting this topic here, uh, especially after uh, the um, fantastic um, presentations by our presenters today, Dr. Samira, Dr. Ses Irish, and also Dr. Dr. Um, Tamar um, Carter who very um, had very um, comprehensive presentations on this very important species in the region, uh, especially in the new uh, territories that they uh, they invaded. Uh, actually, the presentations made by the previous presenters made my life very easy to uh, to go through um, some of those um, methods and techniques without without going in further details. So um, we are dealing with this um, beast, in fact, um, Anopheles Stephen's eye, don't um, fool, don't be fooled by this very pretty picture of this mosquito. It is a very um, dangerous beast. Now, the, the, the distribution of this species in Iran is limited to the southern parts of the country where we have the uh, coastal areas of Persian Gulf and Sea of uh, Oman where the weather is generally hot and humid in uh, throughout the year, especially during the, the warmer uh, summer months. It has a sort of worldwide distribution from Western China to, uh, to the Middle East and uh, recently invaded some countries in the Horn of Africa and uh, our colleagues um, covered this, this part very well in their presentation. So that is why um, uh, this, in, this species is, is crucial and very important in uh, malaria control in the whole of uh, the region and beyond. And that is why uh, WHO is concerned with this uh, increasing uh, range of this species. Now, after this very short uh, introduction, I'm going to go uh, through some of those surveillance methods that are being used in uh, have been in fact used and are being used in our country during the last 70 years of combating malaria in Iran. Now, as Dr. Irish mentioned very well in details, I'm just going to make the, I mean, mention the names of some of those methods, pyrotron spray catch, aspirator catch, pit shelter, exit trap collections, human landing catch and um, human baited um, collection, also animal baited collection, especially very important because of the um, uh, zoophilic tendency of this species. And also finally, CDC light trap. These are the um, classic uh, surveillance system that we are uh, using in our country, generally for malaria and also specifically for Anopheles stephensi, as this is the main and most important species of malaria vectors in the country. Now, using these methods, we um, actually uh, measure the, these indicators. For example, the indoor resting collections um, using aspirator is used to, um, to detect the occurrence, the density, species identification, and also um, the specimens are used for insecticide susceptibility status monitoring. Uh, parity rates, human blood index, and sporozoite rate. Of course, some of the methods of collecting mosquitoes during the surveillance are not used for certain um, indicators. For example, when we use in indoor spray, uh, pyrotrum spray, then we cannot use it for uh, the specimens for insecticide susceptibility assay because apparently the mosquitoes are dead. So I'm not going to uh, go through the whole of this table, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, I named only uh, surveillance methods that are being used in the country. And also in great details, Dr. Irish mentioned um, uh, the methodology of these surveillance um, methods. And uh, as um, uh, I mentioned earlier, the animal beta trap uh, is, very, uh, is very important, as I mentioned, because the um, the um, the tendency for zoophilic activities of this species. Now these are some of the pictures of um, 
collecting mosquitoes using a spray catch, uh, apparently in animal shelter, in stables, where they tend to um, rest before and after the, the feeding. Um, yes, collecting mosquitoes after being knocked down by the spray. And here the uh, aspirator um, collection in the stables and also in human dwellings. Uh, also larval survey using the typical classic uh, dipping method. Now with these, um, with these surveillance system, we gather um, information regarding the bio biology, ecology, behavior, insecticide resistance, and um, the, um, the um, indicators related to the epidemiology of the disease. Now, for example, the biological forms of the, uh, the species, we have, in fact, three biological, different biological forms, uh, and they are uh, distinguished by counting the number of ridges on one side of the egg float. Now, if the number of ridges um, is less than 15, it's the Mizorensis type, I mean, form. If it's more than 17, it's the uh, type form. And if it's in between, apparently it is intermediate. Uh, it's not very difficult if you put the, the egg um, on the, uh, binocular very simply under the, 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 the loop, then you can easily count the number of ridges, very simple. Now here, I think I can count uh, 13 um, ridges. So that means it is the Mizorensis form. Um, as I mentioned, it has epidemiological and control implication because uh, for example, in southern Iran, in the coastal areas, we have the um, type and intermediate form, which are uh, more anthropophilic, whereas in the rural hilly areas, mountainous hilly areas, we have the Mizorensis form, which is more of a, a zoophilic uh, tendency. So in terms of the transmission of the disease, there are differences between these biological forms. Of course, we tried some molecular markers to identify and distinguish between the biological forms, apparently with no success, because with um, mitochondrial DNA, um, CO1, CO2, uh, ITS2, and also this new one, um, Anopheles Stephensi OBP1, we were not successful in determining the biological forms. So we have to stick with the old school counting of the number of ridges on the uh, float, egg floats. Uh, some more information uh, by, uh, that we, we gathered by uh, monitoring um, the, um, the, the mosquitoes in the area using the surveillance system. We um, have the urban breathing places uh, that are wells, cisterns, fountains, uh, water used for construction, these are in urban areas, switch from public bath, uh, garden pounds, uh, and also palm irrigation canals. Some more, such as water stored in drums, especially in places where the uh, tap water is not um, available, um, cement pools, stream margins, catch basins, uh, CPH canals, drainage containers of air conditioner, which is very important, and also rooftop uh, water tanks in the area. In terms of the rural, rural breathing places, we have pools, uh, stream beds, margins of streams, seepage uh, around the marshes, animal hoof prints, and also rice field, especially where uh, the um, rice is newly planted. Um, continue the rural breeding places like drains, um, garden pits, palm irrigation canals, water pits along river banks and beds, uh, standing water under trees and pre-domiciliary uh, water. In terms of sun and salinity, it is very uh, important to notice that larvae of this species prefer 
full sunlight and also it tolerates a whole range of salinity from fresh water to um, high salinity, even, even sometimes higher than the seawater. So I'm gonna show you now some of the pictures of the breeding places of this species. Uh, it, it occupies a variety of different breeding places, including plastic water pools, cement pools, buckets or drums uh, for, uh, for water, and also cement pools underground or underground. Now, river bed seepages uh, from river and palm irrigation canal um, ponds, stream beds and stream edges. They are um, the uh, routine and uh, classic breeding places for this species, rice field, um, seepages, ponds, river bed, underground water can canals, um, which used to be and still is, uh, still are uh, quite common in uh, southern Iran. Broken water pipe and also uh, dripping water from um, air conditioning systems, uh, groundwater storage. Of course, they are um, um, and, and manipulated to prevent breeding mosquitoes inside, but Quite often the lid is, is uh, left open, so then mosquitoes can get in and, and uh, lay eggs. Um, yes, irrigation canal. This is the typical water reservoir in um, hot and um, uh, hot areas in southern Iran, in desert-like areas where water from uh, rain goes inside when it rains, and then the water is used for uh, the rest of the season or the year. Animal drinking water and also water stored in barrels, animal drinking water containers and wells. Okay, so in terms of resting habitats, uh, because the species is mainly endophilic and endophagic, uh, and also it rests both inside the human dwellings as well as in animal shelters. But it ha has to be bear in mind, borne in mind, that it readily uh, bites outside and stays outside, especially during the warmer months of uh, very hot summers. Uh, inside, it tends to uh, rest on lower parts of the wall, and ceiling thatch, um, prefers to rest on the furniture, hanging uh, items like clothes and spider webs. And also in warmer months of the year, it's, um, it prefers to rest inside the Ersenberg water containers. Outside or outdoors, in the deeper, uh, darkened recesses of caves, underground shelter like underground water canals, and also pit shelters are the favorite outdoor resting habitats for these species in Iran. In terms of flight range, it is a more, more or less, uh, I mean, about one kilometers to, in some rural areas, to up to five kilometers. But, but generally speaking, it's one to two kilometers in terms of flight range. Uh, when it comes to the seasonal activity in very hot areas in southern Iran, it has two peaks, one in April, May, uh, which is smaller, and the bigger one in September, October. Whereas in cooler, hilly areas, it has only one uh, activity uh, um, uh, peak, which is in August. Also, we did not observe any hibernation and oestivation for this species in, in the country. This is the seasonal activity I was talking about, the first peak and the second peak. In terms of anthropophilic index, it's uh, less than 20%. So it, it can be considered as uh, as more zoophilic species when we compare it to, with, for example, Anopheles gambi. Uh, however, um, with the Mizurensis form, the um, anthropophilic index is 
a bit lower as it tends to be more of a um, zoophilic tendency. This is the biting time uh, measured in the country. The first peak is around 10-ish in the evening and the second, which is a smaller peak, uh, around early in the morning in 1 a.m. Um, I'm talking, I'm not sure if everyone listened. I mean, um, hears my uh, voice correctly. Hello? I can hear you fine. Oh, good. That's yeah, fine. Okay. <laughs> very good. Okay. <laughs> because very, very quiet. So, uh, yeah. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, in terms of sporozoite rates, uh, we measured about 0.2 to 0.7 in Iran, but up to 5% was measured in, in India. So quite a range of different uh, sporozoite rates, of course, based, I mean, according to the, I mean, depending on the season and also um, depending on the year and outbreak of the disease and so on and so forth. And some indications of the uh, R note, stability index and bacterial capacity, we uh, measured the R note of this species in um, um, in Iran from 0.4 to 2. However, the stability index is less than half, less than 0.5, um, indicating a sort of unstable malaria transmission by this species. Yet, uh, this is the main species, uh, main vector species in the country. Um, here again, we can uh, see that the type um, biological form is different because of ha having higher anthropophilic index. It tends to have more of a R note and uh, and um, the vectorial capacity compared to the Mizorensis form. Now um, let's uh, go through the control activities in the country. Now. In Iran, before um, embarking on any, on, on any kind of interventions back in the uh, first half of the 20th century, where the population of the country was less than 20 million, now it's 80 million, the number of cases uh, were the stag staggering number of 5 million, uh, with, you can um, imagine the number of deaths. Um, the first national malaria control program uh, was before the malaria eradication campaign in the world. Uh, and the interventions were DDT, IRS, and oiling the stagnant water and using Cambodia fish. Using these interventions, we managed to reduce the parasite rates from 20% to 1%. And then along with the world, we embarked on the nation, national malaria eradication program, uh, but not fully. We started from 1956, but uh, we had to uh, abandon it because of the insecticide resistance in 1961. Um, again, using DDT, IRS, and MDA. As I mentioned, because of the insecticide resistance, then we had to uh, stop the IRS because we did not have any alternative to DDT at the time. Now, we, after about um, seven, eight years, we started again with Malathion, uh, followed by Propoxa IRS as the main intervention for Anopheles Stephens eye control, uh, coupled with Temephos as larvicide. Now, the second malaria um, control program started in 1980 to 2009, we used Propoxor and then followed by pyrethroid insecticide as IRS and distribution of um, long-lasting insecticidal nets since 2004. Also, we used Temephos as larvicides and where not possible in terms of the procurement, we used BTI. The first national malaria elimination program started in 2010 to 2015 with the um, aim of quick, I mean, the strategy of quick diagnosis and treatment, 24 hours, 24 hours. 
And uh, using the interventions of IRS, LLINs, and larvae siding, availability of free treatment and robust surveillance system. Um, but in 2011, we encountered with uh, pirate shoe resistance in Anopheles Stephensi. Then we rotated it with uh, Bendiocar. Now, as um, I mentioned, some of the resistance uh, problems in our country. Recently, we published a paper in Malaria Journal on the evolution of insecticide resistance and its mechanisms in Onophilus uh in the whole region, Eastern Mediterranean region, including Iran, because um, we are quite good, I mean, um, relatively good in monitoring of insecticide resistance in the country. So um, I put it here for further reading for our uh, participants. The second national um, elimination program from 2015-2020 with the aim of eliminating Plasmodium falciparum first and then Plasmodium vivax um, through stronger surveillance, focus-based approach for case finding and vector control um, and integrating the whole of the program into the health system. Now, um, we are reporting now three successive years of zero indigenous cases. So then we are ahead of the program in terms of elimination. I hope we can sustain this zero indigenous cases during uh, the midst of this in pandemic in the country where we um, worried about the impact of this, this disease on the surveillance and control activities of the disease in southern Iran. Now, what are we going to do next? So now that we managed to um, lower the number of cases, indigenous cases, to zero for in the last um, three, two, three years, now, we have to enforce on the entomological surveillance. Now, these are the uh, entomological surveillance that are currently being undertaken in the country to determine the occurrence, density, parity, human blood index, and sporozoite rate. Uh, it's been done every two weeks during the, season, the seasonal activity of the, um, the mosquitoes. Also, other methods to do the insecticide susceptibility tests. However, we have um, planned and proposed a post-elimination surveillance strategy. Um, as I mentioned, because we managed to um, um, reduce the number of cases to zero, that, that means technically we eliminated the disease, still awaiting confirmation by WHO and uh, the certificate of malaria-free status. However, this is the uh, proposed post-elimination surveillance strategy, which is, stratify, which is, strat is stratification of the areas in terms of receptivity and vulnerability. Meaning we have, where we have receptive areas plus high vulnerability, then um, we um, undertake annually uh, the entomological surveillance to determine vector composition and density, parity, susceptibility to insecticides. Of course, every five years to see if there are any changes in the uh, behavioral characteristics of the uh, vectors. Uh, in stratum where we have receptivity, but medium vulnerability not high, then instead of uh, annual activities, we put and propose every three years doing the same activities um, in terms of surveillance. Uh, but where we have receptivity, but very low vulnerability, we um, plan to survey, uh, do the surveillance every five years. Of course, in terms of the interventions, wherever we have uh, imported cases, we uh, duly uh, embark on the um, uh, interventions. So um, my um, 
presentation finished by this slide, but I'm not sure if I have enough time to show two um, um, video clips, each for one and a half minutes. Uh, this is the question to the chair. Okay, go ahead. All right then. So let me see if I can if I can um, routine entomological surveys have a significant role in planning and assessment of vector control activities. Right, and uh, one more minute of this video, which is on minute um, eight. A standard long lasting insecticidal nets, as well as face to face training of people for its use, were implemented for the first time in Iran by the Global Fund Malaria Project support. To protect the people at risk, so far nearly 300,000 LLINs have been distributed among households in the affected districts and it has been planned to buy about 400,000 more in future. Considering the limited educational facilities in the target areas, a fabric album and a poster were designed and published by the support of the Malaria Focal Fund. Residual spray or IRS has also been supported and stressed. And insecticide resistant monitoring is one of the main activities of the elimination program, which is in progress by the Global Fund support. against malaria, environmental management and manipulation has always been in focus, thereby reducing the number of breeding phases of vector therapy in the elimination program is always emphasized. However, lack of enough facilities has been an obstacle to make it real. Larva siding is one of our important activities. By resources of the Global Fund Malaria Project, Bioplant, which is a biological herbicide, was purchased. It has no environmentally adverse effects and due to its simple usage and in order to increase community participation, it was distributed among the households in the affected areas. Establishment of emergency. Right, uh, so that's um, all from me.